Hey everybody, this is Aaron Murakami with a and Electronic Media and Energy Science and Technology Conference. This is just going to be a short little video just showing you how I use the uh, shot shell as a, a core material. Um, I learned about this one from Paul Babcock and this is from Precision Reloading. This is basically pellets that you use for reloading shotgun uh, cartridges and um, this is the number seven one from Precision. And the good thing about this is that the way that it's made is that there's not really um, any residual magnetism. This is a big neo magnet here. You see, that's a pretty good neo magnet. When you take it away, these pellets just all just kind of fall apart. They don't really stick or cling to each other. And this is what you want if you want a coil that, when it's magnetized, it magnetizes quick, but it also demagnetizes very, very fast. It doesn't retain any residual magnetism. You know, maybe an insignificant um, amount. But it's very, very um, works very, very well. You can put this uh, neo on uh, some pellets, put them on the table, roll them around, and they won't really stick to each other. Um, you know, maybe a couple will have a little, little bit, but for the most part, it really releases the magnetism fast, which means if you're all about the rate of change, you're going to get a higher um, oscillatory transient, which everybody calls the spike. You get a higher voltage spike, the faster it can turn off. Um, the other benefit is that since they're balls they have little spaces in between there. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, what you do is you're going to fill up your core and then you're going to dump them into um, some type of cardboard box. This I got two coils here that I'm going to be doing this with and so all the balls for two coils are uh, in here right now and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it with acrylic and what the acrylic spray is going to do is it's going to coat the balls and it gives it a dielectric layer which is like an insulating layer so there's no conductivity between them and so what you're going to do is as the coil the core gets charged or saturated with a magnetic field what happens is that a lot of that magnetic flux goes in between the little spaces uh, between the balls in that dielectric layer not only in the airspace but also in the space of that acrylic gap which means that as you ramp the magnetism into the core up the, the uh, inductance doesn't drop down. It stays fairly uh, uh, steady because as it you keep uh, cramming magnetic flux into that core it has all these little spaces to go. So what we're going to do is, I already have it measured out, basically you just get whatever core, uh, coil form you're going to use. These are kind of ugly, I 3D printed these and just playing around. But um, you pour the balls into there and then you find out how many you're going to use, you pour them in a cardboard box and then what we're going to do is we're going to spray them with acrylic and you just kind of let that dry and you kind of shake them around a little bit and then you give another coating and you do that maybe three or four times and then you'll get a, uh, a decent layer um, all over it and then after that's done you put it back in the uh, core and then what you do is you add some epoxy and that epoxy will set it up and then you got a good uh, uh, core material for fast off and on switching and so um, these will be used for some generator coils for some experiments so we'll go to the next step of uh, spraying it with some uh, acrylic alright so we have all the pellets in there the acrylic that I'm going to use is just this Krylon Color Master, it's an acrylic clear spray gloss and so I'm just gonna spray all of this it's pretty cold out here take a little bit longer to dry but that's okay I just don't want the fumes in the shop okay so I'm just gonna mist a couple coats here kind of kick it around a little bit Just let that sit for a bit. So I did a couple more um, coatings last night, and so right now, um, so it just kind of sticks together a little bit, but you can just kind of break it apart. And these are all coated with the acrylic layer, so that's the dielectric layer that a lot of the flux gets crammed into, besides the space. 
so this prevents the balls from being electrically conductive with each other. And so, time to fill those into the coils, mix up the epoxy, pour it in, and let it set. Okay, now that the pellets are coated with the um, acrylic spray, and again, that's the uh, just some simple acrylic uh, clear, It'd be whatever color you want. Um, doesn't really matter. And so in here, these are the, um, the pellets that were sprayed, dried. And so what we're going to do is just lay a couple out. You know, and if these are sticking together, it's not because they're magnetized. It's because the acrylic dried and dried them together. So when I break that apart, probably going to expose a part of it. But anyway, I'm just going to do a quick little uh, uh, continuity test. And so, you know, if you short your probes, you can see that you have uh, continuity there. So you can see I'm lifting up one of the pellets, and there's no continuity. So there's continuity there. There's no continuity on, on the pellet itself. See, no continuity. So what that did is it created that dielectric uh, layer. And as thin as that layer is, when the two balls are together, or multiple ones are crammed together, that uh, magnetic flux is going to cram into the spaces between the balls but also between the actual layers themselves and so that helps to keep the inductance fairly constant while that core is getting uh, uh, saturated so that the inductance doesn't drop down you can keep shoving more and more magnetism in there and so anyway so that's a success um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, fill these coils up I'm going to put some uh, good tacky tape down here on the bottom, fill it up, and we're going to mix up our epoxy, uh, put it in there, let that cure, and then we're done. So this is the kind of tape that I like to use. Um, it's this uh, foil tape uh, for sealing uh, cracks in um, different types of insulation or um, the aluminum radium barriers. What I like about it is that it's so tacky that if you fold it over and connect the sticky parts, it's nearly impossible to separate without ripping it apart. So this stuff is really, really, really sticky. So I'm going to put this down on the bottom end here. Same thing on the other side. I guess I could have 3D printed it so that this is solid down on this bottom, but it makes it harder to wind um, if you need to have something going all the way through. Okay, next we're going to mix these in parts uh, one, uh, one to one. And so the resin that I like to use, um, I think I might have got this on Amazon, is this is tabletop epoxy. And so if you ever go to a restaurant and you see the tables where it has like a uh, kind of like a layer of uh, epoxy type of glass on top and it might have like keys or coins underneath or different knickknacks and pictures and stuff, what they do is they lay that out on the table and then what they do is they basically mix this one to one, pour it on top of the table and it kind of self levels and what it does is it encases all those things in the table and so it's a protective coating that um, easy to repair you know over time and it keeps the table uh, kind of preserved and so that's basically what this stuff is used for and so you basically just do you know one to one uh, ratio mix it up for about three minutes um, don't get too many air bubbles in it and then you pour it in after you um, add the pellets and then you just let it uh, cure for the uh, indicated amount of time um, obviously with the pellets in here it's not going to take very much so we're going to just use a real tiny amount of each one to fill up uh, both of these. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-fill these um, maybe a quarter quarter of the, the pellets at a time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the epoxy in and then I'm going to add more pellets a little bit more epoxy and so forth till we fill them up because 
this stuff might be too thick to get through all the tight spaces so we'll just do a little bit at a time have some plastic piece of plastic use this junk plastic to stir that stuff up says mix it for three to five minutes or until it's thoroughly blended well since I don't really have very much it's pretty much thoroughly blended already pour some more pellets inside We fill it almost to the top so when we put the rest of the ball, uh, pellets in that um, they'll sink into it and get covered up by the epoxy. So one thing I forgot to show is that I did use this to tamp those balls down and give me a little bit extra space and I used the rest of the balls in the, that were in the box in here. So. This thing is maximally filled, and that epoxy is definitely taking up all the space in there. So we'll let that cure. So it's about an hour later, and this one, the resin soaked right through into the into the uh, throughout all the pellets. Nothing dripped out the bottom, so it really did uh, go in there pretty good. And so some of this stuff is still kind of wet, so I'm just going to brush it in the top and uh, fill that up. So you might want to keep an eye on it in case you have to do the same thing. So I let these sit on the floor of my boiler room uh, pretty much all day. It's about, uh, well, I don't know, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. And these things were pretty cured, nice and hard. I don't know how it is on the inside, but at least on the outside it's nice and sealed. It's good hard epoxy. Nothing leaked out. So I just got to pull off this... Uh, tape here and we're done and that's that's the uh, kind of core material I'm going to use at least for these next experiments so worked out pretty good and didn't take very much epoxy at all hardly uh, dented these uh, bottles there <laughs>